The presenter of the NBA Lifetime Achievement Award has had some great achievements in his own career. His films have made over $5 billion, making him the highest grossing film actor of all time. He has appeared in more than 184 films and TV production in his career. And he has 100 more coming out next week. From Spider-Man Far From Home, give it up for Samuel L. Jackson. Make it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there is one unassailable fact in sports. Every generation thinks their heroes are the best the game has ever seen. The truth of the matter is, the game has changed so much through the years, it's always been hard to measure one set of heroes against another. But we're in the age of information now, and the younger generation can see with their own eyes what us old guys are talking about when we say, they ain't nothing like Larry Legend and Magic Johnson. Google their eight NBA championships in nine years, or their six MVPs in seven. YouTube their jaw-dropping highlights, although apologies in advance for the short shorts and long-ass socks. <laughs> Stream the documentaries about how their parallel excellence fueled a rivalry that became an undying friendship. You can even like the Broadway play based on their beautifully complex relationship. It's all out there at your fingertips. But with all due respect to social media, you can't tell their sublime saga in 280 characters. I see a, a lot of young players out there who were born after Magic and Larry retired, and it's hard to explain how before these two, basketball was a sport. After, it was a religion. Yes, the game has definitely changed. There's no denying that. But let's be damn sure we never forget that these two are the guys who changed it. Bird versus Magic. Magic versus Bird. It was so intense. Along comes Magic, along comes Bird. They immediately had this tremendous competition. Larry and Magic dominated the 80s. They carried the NBA with honor. It helped elevate the NBA to another level. Everybody just get ready, sit back, and uh, let's enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Johnson played with a mission. Larry Bird, one more impossible shot after the other. A lot of guys can just score. A lot of guys can just rebound. A lot of guys can just make plays. We can do it all. The way we played the game of basketball was exactly the same. That's why we hated each other. Now that's a steal by Bird. On the lead to DJ We would do anything to win. Johnson over Parrish. He hits it. It's over, and the most valuable player is Magic Johnson. The Boston are the NBA world champions. I'm really proud to receive this award. Once you're considered the best, you want to stay there. Larry Bird at the buzzer. Three-pointer. Yes! Oh, my! You just can't orchestrate it better than that. I'll remember all of these good times. Magic and Larry had a come-together moment where they realized how important they were to each other. Magic's just a great basketball player. There will never, ever be another Larry Bird. Magic and Bird. The greatest rivalry in sports history. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 Lifetime Achievement Award recipients, Larry Bird and Captain Black, Irvin Magic Johnson. He's all right. I'll go first. Get back here and be quiet. Hold this for me. Okay. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> Lifetime Achievement Award. That means you've been around a long time. In Magic's case, probably a little too long. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I see all these highlights. I haven't seen a lot of them for a long time. But 
You know, I played for the Boston Celtics, if you didn't know that, and very proud, too. Um, played with a lot of great teammates. Even played with some Hall of Famers. Dave Cowens, Pete Maravich, my favorite, Bill Walton, Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, and Dennis Johnson, and Kevin Pritchard. Well, I had to get that in there because he's my boss now, so. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, a few right after I got done playing for the Celtics, Donnie Walsh and Herb Simon called me to see if I had any interest in coaching the Indiana Pacers. Right away, I said no. The next call, no. Next time I met with him, no. So I called my friend Rick Carlisle. So you ain't going to believe this. They're trying to get me coach the Indiana Pacers. He goes, don't do it. Stay away from it. Find some other hobby to do. I go, okay, I'll never do that. Well, guess what? I did it. Called Rick up and said, you ready to go be assistant with me? He looked at me and said, I can't believe you're doing this. I said, well, hey, if it turns out bad, at least we can hang around with Reggie Miller for three years. So uh, we did it. We had some success. And uh, the only reason we had success, I believe, is just because they were great players. They played together. They cared. You had Reggie, Mark, Dale, Rick, Jalen, Chris Mullen, Sam Perkins, Austin Crozier, just a wonderful group of guys. And even one year we got to the finals, they ran into Shaq and Colby, which was, you know, a little tough at the time, especially when they were young. Then I had an opportunity to go in the front office for a number of years and absolutely enjoyed it, being back at home in Indiana. You know, the one thing that I see happens often is you see these old broken down NBA players talking about their area and how great they were back then. And the players today are not as good as they were back then. That's crazy, man. I mean, obviously, you haven't seen LeBron James the last 17, 18 years. You didn't see Clay Thompson score 37 points in one quarter. Or you didn't see Clay Thompson, like I did, score 30, or 60 points in 32 minutes. Or obviously, you don't see James Harden come down the lane getting ready to dunk on whoever's standing there. I mean, it's just amazing how these guys are playing the game today. And I couldn't be more prouder of them. The game's in a good place. And what I tell all these young players coming in today is keep the game the way you found it, and it can go on for generations to come. Thank you. First of all, God is so good. But listen, man, retirement is great for you because you've never talked this long. <laughs> So I want to thank Dr. Jerry Buss, the late great Dr. Jerry Buss, for drafting me back way back in the day. Um, his beautiful daughter, now running the Lakers, Jeannie. But let me just also thank Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He was on this stage earlier, made my life so easy. One of my other former players that I played with, Jamal Wilkes, is here as well, Hall of Famer. Vladi, I see you over there. Thank you, rookie season. I got to, Larry, I got to tell you a quick story about Jamal. It was my rookie season, and uh, I threw a pass down the lane, and Jamal wasn't looking, and uh, it went out of bounds, and the coach said, damn it, rookie, you can't make that pass. So I said, okay. So next time, Doc, we came down again, the same play. Jamal wasn't looking, so I hit him right in the head. So I told Jamal, don't make me look bad when I throw a pass like that. So Jamal, remember that play. But anyway, I want to thank Laker organization. I want to thank all my teammates, also the greatest coach that's ever lived, Pat Riley, for being such a great coach and allowing me to play up and down basketball. I want to thank my beautiful wife, Cookie. And And last but not least, man, listen. I think we pushed each other to greatness. And every day I watch your box score, and I said, man, he had a high triple-double. I always wanted to just be just where you were. So thank you for pushing me, and I hope I did the same for you. God bless you. Thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Thanks, Sam.